Welcome to the lecture about the overview and brief history of the main industrial ecology methods. Next to looking at the different methods and the main applications, we also want to have a run through the different community infrastructure for industrial ecology research that are already in place. Industrial ecology is an interdisciplinary system science for studying sustainable development. It is the study of the flows of materials and energy in industrial and consumer activities, and it studies the effects of material and energy use and production on the environment and how the economic, political, regulatory and social factors influence the use of materials and energy in society. A bit shorter but more technically, you can say that industrial ecology studies the socio-economic metabolism, which is the transformation of materials and energy within society. Industrial ecology captures five system linkages in the global socio-ecological system and these linkages are listed here. The linkages include the global supply chains, the link between service provision, stock accumulation and material and energy flows, the material cycles, co- and by-production and waste generation and use, and the link between urban fabric and consumption patterns. For studying those linkages we can use different methods and those methods are listed on the left side. It's life cycle assessment, environmental input-output analysis, material flow analysis, the analysis of industrial symbiosis and urban metabolism studies. And these methods and linkages follow certain principles like the mass balance or the market balance. And it's the purpose of this lecture to give a quick overview of how exactly these five methods study those linkages and what their history is. So we can say that these methods group around the core field of industrial ecology, but of course there's many other methods that are important and that are somehow linked. There's climate models, there's energy system models, integrated assessment models, and there's also general equilibrium models, economic models. But here we will focus on the core IE methods. Life cycle assessment is the first one. It's used to study global supply chains, so the link between remote resource extraction, material production, to the consumption of products and services in front of us. Life cycle assessment is the compilation and evaluation of the inputs, outputs, and potential environmental impacts of a product system throughout its life cycle. The main application is the comparative assessment of products and the calculation of footprints like water footprints of vegetables and so on. So with life cycle assessments we study the global supply chains. Life cycle thinking is quite old. It started in the 60s and it was taken up both in the US and in Western Europe. Since the 1990s we have consistent life cycle inventory databases. These are databases that describe industrial processes or product supply chains at the very high level of details. We have an ISO standard for life cycle assessment to make sure that different assessments are comparable. We have a journal for it and we have some community efforts to further develop and standardize the methodology, for example the UNIP SETAC life cycle initiative. One big research frontier in life cycle assessment is the regionalized impact assessment of consumption. For example, to have not just an average water footprint of vegetables, but actually go down to the watershed level to really distinguish between food products that were farmed in regions with abundant water and food products that come from regions with potential water scarcity. The second core industrial ecology method is material flow analysis, which is a systematic assessment of the flows and stocks of material within a system defined in space and time. It can be easily explained when comparing it to life cycle assessment. In life cycle assessment we compare, we assess the many different materials in a single product. In material flow analysis we typically focus on single materials but assess them across multiple products because we want to know how the scrap for example that comes from building can be recycled back into other product sectors or other sectors of the, of the economy. So we trace substances or materials across different economic sectors, products, and study resource extraction, 
the service provision and the use phase and the potential for recycling and thus energy and emission savings. Material flow analysis can be regarded as the oldest industrial ecology method. It is much older than the field. The mass balance principle has been known since around 1750 and the energy balance principle since around 1840. Senke diagrams where the flow width is proportional to the flow value, mass or energy, have been known for more than 120 years and the basic methodology of material flow analysis that builds on this principle has been established since the early 90s so that we have a common standard for how we model processes, how we describe flows and how we establish mass balance equations. Material flow analysis can be used to extrapolate current material use into the future and link it to energy consumption and emissions. In this example we try to extrapolate the current steel cycle to the year 2050 starting with stocks of steel as service providers and then calculating how much primary production do we need to make to maintain and expand the steel stocks and how much secondary production or steel recycling we can do based on the scrap that is available. We can then estimate the energy consumption of primary and secondary steel production and link it to emission savings, for example, due to energy efficiency in the industry or material efficiency due to lifetime extension or improved recycling. So material flow analysis is the basis of such assessments. We have a mass balance systems and then on top of that we can assess different sustainable development strategies. The third important industrial ecology method that I want to dive into is environmentally extended input-output analysis. Input-output analysis studies the entire industrial system and its linkage to the environment. It is a method to construct global supply chains to link remote resource extraction to local consumption. In that extent, it is similar to life cycle assessment and in fact life cycle assessment and input output analysis share the same mathematical model which is the Leontief input output model. The main application of input output analysis is the calculation of footprints of environmental footprints for example the carbon water land and material footprints of consumption baskets or the final consumption in entire countries. Input and output analysis has been known since the 1920s and it actually dates back to a French economist Casnay from the 18th century who started balancing the economy and considering different sectors in the economy. Multi-regional input-output analysis which combines input-output tables from different countries has been also known for quite a while and since the last 10 years we have now had high resolution multi-regional input output tables available. One example application of input output analysis is the carbon footprint of global tourism where we can calculate how many carbon emissions can be associated with global tourism activities not only international tourism traveling across countries but also domestic tourism. So input output analysis can link emissions and other environmental impacts to consumption activities. Industrial symbiosis is the fourth method and it describes how a network of diverse organization can combine together, can be linked together to foster eco-innovation and long-term cultural change in the local system, mainly by reusing each other's waste and reutilizing energy flows. A typical example of industrial symbiosis can be found in so-called eco-industrial parks, which are parks where different businesses cooperate to exchange waste flows, which can be in other industries, raw material, and thus reduce pollution, and also to share information and a common energy and, for example, water supply infrastructure. Industrial symbiosis has a long tradition in industry. One can see that the early integrated steel mills could be a first example of industrial symbiosis because they avoid the need to reheat the steel when it comes to alloying and rolling. This has happened since the 1930s. The same applies to chemical plants and in particular oil refineries. 
but also the co-location of energy intensive industries. A typical example is locating paper mills close to coal power stations uh, to use the waste heat from the power station to dry the paper. This is historically quite an important example of industrial symbiosis. Interestingly, industrial symbiosis is not only a Western example, it can be found across industrial history. We already had the example of the early steel mills, integrated steel mills, but also across political systems. What you can see here is an industrial symbiosis example from former Eastern Germany, where lignite was used to produce not only electricity, but also to produce tar, gas, briquettes for domestic heating and other energy carriers that can be used in subsequent industries. And with this combined plant, the overall energy efficiency of this process could be increased to 76%, whereas the individual plants alone typically would only have an efficiency of 30 to 40%. This example is about 60 years old. Finally, the industrial ecology method of urban metabolism studies. We want to facilitate the description and the analysis of flows of materials and energy within cities to also see cities as complex systems and also main contributors to both resource use but also motors of innovation and potentially also of climate change mitigation. So therefore we want to see and look at the city as a whole and see how uh, the citizens there and the industries consume, store and maybe reuse materials and also energy. The earliest known example of urban metabolism is an essay on the metabolism of Berlin by a physician Theodor Weil from 1894. And since then there have been numerous examples of studying urban systems. There's an essay The Metabolism of Cities by Wollmann in 65 and today metabolism cities are applied all across the globe and also they can be used to compare the performance of different cities. For example, here you see how the population density impacts transport energy consumption. That no surprise, the denser the city, lower the transport need because of shorter distances and more public transport, and the more sparsely populated, the higher the transport demand. So this is one core finding of urban metabolism studies. Towards the end of this lecture, I want to show a few examples of community infrastructure that has evolved around the different ecology, the industrial ecology methods. Infrastructure is important because it helps to exchange data and software, so it speeds up this, the research and it also increases the general quality. First of all, we have a forum on our webpage where we share information and where also questions and open issues can be posted. So this is a good platform to stay connected with the community. There is a strong movement within the community towards open software and data. And the main reason is that within industrial ecology, in many aspects, we have reached the limit of what we can do as individual research researchers or small research teams. In the future, there will have to be more collaboration to stay up to date and to tackle the pressing research questions of sustainable development. And collaboration in large teams, maybe across different PhD student generations and also across continents, requires powerful infrastructure and requires access to information and to tools. One example is the prototype of a general database for industrial ecology where a new data model is applied and implemented with many examples that can describe not only stocks and flows, but also process coefficients, economic data and life cycle data. There is a comprehensive overview of the different available life cycle databases, both process databases and product databases. It's called the Open LCA Nexus. It is the most comprehensive inventory of lifecycle data available and it comprises both open data that are freely available and proprietary data for which a license needs to be purchased. Finally, we have a dashboard on open software for industrial ecology covering the main methods we have 
talked about here. So these are routines to format data, to do analysis and also to link different methods. So I invite you to have a look at the materials that are already there that could ideally help you to get started and you can work on a higher level and can spend more time on analysis of results rather than trying to gather data or develop tools that already exist. Thank you for your attention.